Hey everybody, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create grunge text in Adobe Photoshop and keep the text live where you can edit it anytime you want. So the first thing we're gonna do is create some text, grab our text tool and just create some text. Now what we're gonna do is create an action to create the grunge effect. So we're gonna go to Window and open Actions and we'll click down here for a new action and we'll just call it grunge one, hit record. I'm gonna put that inside this folder here. So in order for this to work, you need to go ahead and create your text layer. Now what we're gonna do is hold command. We're gonna click the icon for the text in the layers palette, and we're gonna load the selection for the text. Now we're gonna come down here and we're gonna click on the mask tool, and you'll see it added those two items to our action. Now with the mask selected, we're gonna come up to filter, and we're gonna go down to Filter Gallery. You can choose Spatter, you can choose Sprayed Strokes, any of these that affect the edges of your text. I'm gonna go ahead and click Spatter. You can adjust these sliders, more smoothness, less smoothness. But I'm just gonna leave mine about right there. I'm gonna click OK. And now you'll see we have grungy text. Now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and click Stop on our action. So now we have this action recorded and we can click on our text. We can change the color of the text. We can also click on our background. We can choose a color for our background. And you can see that that grunge effect knocks out the text so that the background shows through. But what if you wanna change the font or change the size of the font? Well, we can click here on the text, just double click it to highlight it. We can change the text and you can see that our mask doesn't quite fit our text. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on this mask. We're gonna drag it to the trash, delete that. We're gonna click on our action. We're gonna run our action. You'll see that it runs through the action and creates that effect again. Now you can click this icon here by the filter gallery. And let me throw that away again, show you what happens. So if you have this icon selected, when you run through the action, when it gets to that point, it's going to stop and it's going to open up the filter gallery where you can adjust the spatter or you can change to a different stroke, you can adjust that, you can adjust and then you can click OK and it'll apply that effect to your text using that mask. So that's how we can create grungy text and be able to change the font. Like I said, we'll just drag that mask to the trash. Say OK. With our text selected, we can come down here and change the font. Change it to something different. We'll change that to a D. Now with our text layer selected, we're going to run through this action again. Just play the action. It's going to pop up. It's always going to revert back to the spatter one because that's how we set up the action. But you can change it to something else that affects the edges or whatever. We'll go back to our spatter one and we can adjust these. Click OK. It'll apply that to our text and we can just keep doing that. Just drag it to the trash, change it, change the size, whatever we want to do. Just rerun this action to recreate that. Now let's create another new document and we're going to create another action here. We'll say grunge 2. I'm going to put that in there with those. Okay, we want to create our text again. I'm going to choose a different font this time. Uh, let's try that one. I'm going to go ahead and make this action, but then I'm going to throw these first three pieces away because we're not going to use that. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to command click here on the T icon in the layers palette to select the text. We're going to come down, create a mask with the mask selected. This time we're going to go to filter. We're going to come down to pixelate and we're going to come down to mesotint. Choose that. And we're going to do coarse dots and we'll say OK. And you'll see that added a bunch of little dots inside our text. Now what I'm going to do is come back up to filter again to blur. We're going to choose this motion blur and we can adjust the direction we want the motion to go like that. It looks like rain coming down. We can adjust the distance for more or less blur. I'm just going to go about 50 or so. Click OK. 
So now we have our text with our motion blur. Now I'm going to click stop on our action. I'm going to throw these away that I don't need. So now we can do the same thing with this. We can click on our text. We can change the color of our text. We can click over here, choose a different background color. Change our background color. We can come back to our text, adjust that red a little bit. There we go. And again, you can see the background showing through the little cracks. And again, if we want to change the font, just click on our text. We can come here, make this bold italic, and you can see it kind of messed up our letters. So we'll just drag that mask to the trash, click on our grunge action, run the action, and there it's created that grunge look again. And one more time, we throw that away. We can put stops here on both of these, so when it runs, we can adjust both of these. Let's run it again. When we get here, we can change our dots to grainy. Click OK. Then we get to the motion bar, and we can change that. If we want it to go a different direction, we can adjust how much. Click OK. And then also, with that text layer selected, we can come down to our effects at the bottom of our layers palette. We can also add a drop shadow, or whatever we want to do to that. Add a little drop shadow to the text. We could also come to bevel and emboss and we could emboss it a little bit, bevel it a little bit. like that we can change the look of our text and then I'm going to show you how you can customize this even further we're going to go to our web browser and we're going to go to a website called transparenttextures.com and all these textures are transparent so we can lay them over our text to create another kind of pattern in our text and you can download these in all different colors you can just choose your color, click the download or create wallpaper to download it. But what I normally do is I just download it in white like that. And I'll show you why in just a second. Let's see. Let's pick, let's pick these squares here. We'll click that, create wallpaper. Now you can save these little tiles because these are, these will create a seamless background. But right now I'm just going to save it as a wallpaper here to my desktop. Going to go back to Photoshop. I'm just going to open that in Photoshop. And that image is pretty huge. So I'm going to crop this down some for this image. That's probably going to work right there. And I'm just going to copy that over to my page I'm working on. Command T to transform. I can blow that up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this layer and I'm going to duplicate that layer. I'm going to click that duplicate. I'm going to change that to multiply and I'm going to select both of those layers. I'm going to click merge layers so that it merges those two layers into one and that just darkens it up a little bit. So now what we can do is we can apply this to our text. What I want to do is change the mode of this to multiply and you'll see that we can see that through our text, but we want to mask this off as well. So what we can do is command click on our text. We'll click on that layer and we'll create a mask. And now it masks that image around our text as well. And we can, with this layer selected, we can go over here to opacity and we can turn that down a little bit just so we kind of get that checkerboard look, but we can still see, we can still see the shared look that we got when we ran that action. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn off this bevel and emboss like that. I'm just going to throw that away. And I want to turn the opacity back up on this a little bit. And you can try different blend modes for this texture. You can try color burn, diff different ones to kind of see what look you want to go for. You can try screen, you can try overlay. Anyway, you can just try these different blend modes and see which one works best for you. You get some pretty weird looking uh, designs sometimes like that. But for now, I'm just going to leave it on multiply. 
And one other thing I want to show you is if you want to adjust this mask on your text, if you double click on the mask, it'll open up this properties window. You can get your brush and you can, with the plus, you can paint with the plus and it'll take away part of the mask. On this one, if you click the minus, you'll add to the mask so that it's going to cut out more of the text. You can also use these sliders here to smooth your mask a little bit, or you can feather the look a little bit, create a little more contrast, or you can even invert your mask if you want to do that, create a totally different look. But these are just a few more tools you can use to manipulate your mask. Click OK when you're done and apply that to your image. We can Command Z to undo that, go back to our original, and that's about it. So we created a couple of actions to create grunge text. And we can actually throw this one away here that we created for this text. Just click on our text layer, click on grunge one, click run. It's going to pull that up. I'm going to change the sprayed strokes this time. I'm going to increase that, turn that way up. And I'm going to click OK. There we go. We applied that to our text. We can turn that uh, image back on if we want to kind of give it a little different look. We could also click on our image, do Command T, right click, go to skew, and then we could kind of skew this where the, the image, the lines of the image kind of follow our text. So we could just adjust that. Whoops. One thing I forgot to do, if you want to adjust this image inside this mask, we'll click this little link and break that link. Then we'll Command T, right click, and we'll go to skew. Now we can move that image inside the text. Kind of get the lines in the image going the same way as our text. Then we can just press return to accept that. And that looks a lot better now that the image is kind of skewed to match our text. And again, with this layer selected, we can turn that opacity back up a little bit if we want to. Again, you can change your blend mode to whatever you want to change it to. Just try different blend modes. So I guess that's about it for now. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video and would like to see more, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to be notified of new releases. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, and Snapchat at RhinoXNation. If you would like to join our Facebook group to ask questions or download files from our videos, please click the link in the description below. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you later.